I am Samir Zurde and a uh, very warm welcome to our second Saturday lecture series. This is a constant series for many decades now and uh, I know you, all of you enjoy coming to Ayuka to uh, listen to this special talks that we have. Well, thank you. Uh, special uh, uh, invitee uh, scientists who actually uh, take out their time to uh, talk with you uh, in simple words, describe their work and describe the latest science that is happening. Uh, of course, we are <clears throat> always fortunate to get the uh, presence of Professor Jay Narlikar, who is also here today, to uh, take part in this special interaction. Now, due to uh, the present conditions outside, due to the pandemic, we are not able to host these lectures um, in our Chandrasekhar Auditorium. So we thought we would bring them to you at your home in, in, <laughs> or in your school as, the, as a revisiting Saturday lectures series. Now, we've had some precious lectures given and they're all recorded on our YouTube uh, channel. So do uh, take out time when, when you feel like uh, to have a look at all the other great lectures that we have recorded and put them up. Uh, today, we are going to have this different, a uh, unique session where uh, we hope that you've watched this lecture, which we have sent to you, the link to which we have sent you before. This is a lecture on why study astronomy. And it was a lovely lecture given about uh, two years back by Professor Nalikar in the Chandrasekhar Auditorium. Now, after uh, you've watched it, I'm sure there, there'll be a lot of questions that come to your mind. So now uh, we have with us Professor Nandikar live <laughs> on this, um, uh, in this meeting with us. And uh, if you put down your questions in the chat box next to this, uh, you will be able to uh, read them out to him and uh, he will be able to answer them live. So in the next half an hour or so, we'll have, we, we expect to have some good interaction between the students and the professor here. Uh, welcome, welcome, sir. Good morning. Good morning. And, uh, Let me see. Sure. I can hear, but he can't hear very well. Anyway. Uh, uh, Zamir, you will have to speak a little slowly when you ask the questions. I will so that he can hear himself. Otherwise, I will have to repeat it. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Now we respect everything, and we will uh, we'll do all the steps to. Uh, yes, it, yes. Uh, yes. Just just speak slowly, uh, yes. with uh, a little distance between the words, so that he can hear better. Yes, surely, sure, we'll do that. And uh, English. English. So, uh, sir, your lecture was in, uh, in English in the Chandrasekhar Auditorium. Uh, it was a lecture on uh, why do we study astronomy? And also you gave some tips on... Uh, why study astronomy? That was the lecture given. And now they are waiting for the students to ask questions on that. Right. So why study astronomy? It was sent to them. Well, it I was, to answer that. Uh, no, no, no. You have given a lecture already two mm. years ago. That recorded lecture. Now the students have heard, and ask they questions. will be and and they are expected to ask some questions, and okay. you will give the answers. That is the program. Okay. So maybe we will start with some questions which will be in all minds. Uh, okay. Is uh, how we, we can. Uh, you know, ourselves as students, I'm, I'm relating myself to a student in school. Yeah, as well. yeah. So uh, how we can uh, ourselves practice some astronomy uh, during these times and in, in general, uh, when I'm not a researcher and I don't have uh, great- How can well. ordinary students practice astronomy or get interested in it and view something? Just the students age say between 12 and 16? That's right. I think there is a series of types of works that such students can do. <coughs> we would call them uh, amateur astronomers. That means the work they do does not affect much what is done all over. Uh, the world, wherever observations are possible. But there are certain uh, observations which are highly professional. 
Now, we don't expect the type of children that you mentioned just now to be professionals. But if they are amateurs, they have a number of uh, possible uh, observations and what I would call conclusions from their, uh, their observations. All these things are possible. So what are they supposed to do? Concrete, sky watch, first of all? So, so <laughs> the way to do it is to attach yourself to some astronomy club, which has already a sort of a tradition of doing good work, amateur work. Now there are such uh, such uh, uh, what you call uh, clubs. Yeah. So clubs. we have to ask them whether they can ad admit one or two more people. And if they feel they might take some examination or they do a viva, viva voci, and decide whether you are going to be a useful person or not. And if they agree that you are going to be useful, then they will co-opt you as a member. And that from then on, you can see what you can do with the help of these more experienced observers. Yes, but shouldn't the, the students first start watching the sky and identifying some stars and planets on their own? The thrill of identifying uh, prominent stars and planets, they should enjoy it also. You see, they can do this, uh, but they can also observe what you call stars which are changing their luminosity by, through oscillations. So they are going up and down in their brightness. They are easy to spot and therefore they are uh, more interesting to watch. So I would start by you are asking uh, the club whether any such observations are in the offing and if they can join them also. That's a good tip. And uh, so uh, firstly, uh, let me thank uh, Dr. Mangala Nalikar as well, who is helping us uh, with the conversation and she is putting in uh, good points as well. Uh, so uh, sir has told us that if you could uh, try to find out some interested in uh, similar uh, interest groups in the city that you live in, I'm, I'm not assuming you are in Pune, all of you. And there are many amateur astronomy groups across the country. You can find any around you, or you could even create your own in your school as a science club or an astronomy club. And in this, you could start with simple observational activities, just like if you have a, if you can, you know, pull together to get a telescope, and you could look at the moon, the changes in the moon, the changes in the uh, sky position of various things. And as Sir uh, said, you could even go to a limit of, uh, you know, looking at stars changing their uh, brightness. So this would be very interesting observations that you could do yourself to start with. Because then, uh, of course, uh, I think there are other steps to begin with a career and uh, we'll just come to that. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the common question that I'm seeing here on, on the chat is, and it goes to Sir is, uh, what inspired you to take up this subject in your career? What? inspired you to study astronomy? What inspired me? Well, when I was in Cambridge as a student, I was studying various branches of mathematics and theoretical uh, physics. While I was doing that, one, one of the speakers was Fred Hoyle who was very well known already for his various science popularization efforts. So it may be the influence of Hoyle that I thought of 
doing my PhD under him. And to that extent, I can say that my decision to go for astronomy came from my interaction with Fred Hoyle. Excellent. So such a great inspiration to get at the perfect time. I, uh, we have uh, some questions, uh, some more questions on uh, actual observations of the skies. Uh, but could you uh, also briefly tell how, uh, I'll just pause, uh, pause a bit. And uh, so the, the thing is to thing to note for all the students is that uh, Professor was already studying physics and mathematics. Mm -hmm. And then he got interested <laughs> in astronomy. So uh, the, the, the idea here is that if you want to get into research or in astronomy, you need to be good at physics and mathematics because this is a applied branch of physics and mathematics is kind of the language of physics and science. So uh, keep these things noted. And if you want to get into this field of uh, study you, uh, and, and research, you need to be good in physics and mathematics. Of course, you can also be an engineer of any kind and, and contribute to astronomy, but you may not be directly doing astronomy. So uh, there, there are there are ways of uh, therefore getting into astronomy through all the branches. But if you want to really do hardcore study of astrophysical objects and understand them, physics is the subject to study and get a master's. Can, can, you do it? Okay. can I can I just add one little yes, thing for the students? Because yes. not everybody is going to be a professional astronomer or going to choose astrophysics as their main career, but they can always be amateur astronomers just by observing, watching the sky and all the bright objects in it. I, uh, they just understand how they are all moving around the earth. Although you learn that the earth moves around the sun, but for us, when we are watching the sky, it is the stars which are moving along the, uh, along the sky from east to west. And just see how they are moving learn to identify and uh, also try to watch all the eclipses or uh, as the professor said, the stars which change their luminosity. Nice. It is fun. And all this is a gift of nature to us and nobody can tamper with it or copy it. See, I would like to add one thing that when you talk of astronomy, you very often say astronomy and astrophysics. Right. What this means is that we see a lot of things in the sky that is astronomy. But what you see, you would like to know what, what it is that you are seeing. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is the physics behind yes. their behavior. And the laws, observation. Behind, the laws behind the movements of those objects, so, they are understood in physics. So I have to uh, tell you that if you go there, you may not observe anything, but others may have observed something and found certain interesting features. So the challenge is to the theoretician to find a theoretical explanation of what he is seeing. Mm -hmm. I think this two-way interaction is always a very interesting part of astronomy. Very well put, sir. Thank you so much. In fact, that uh, relates to the example you have given in your uh, talk, where, where uh, you talk about Tycho Brahe and uh, his student Kepler, who is the more famous person. And uh, so Kepler basically used his uh, understanding of physics and mathematics and applied it to Tycho Brahe's observations and uh, became an astrophysicist in a way. <laughs> so yes, they both they both have contributed to astrophysics. Exactly. Right. The observer by observing well and keeping very good accurate records and the physicist or the mathematician by interpreting all that data and finding out the hidden laws of physics behind it. So they both definitely. are important. Definitely, definitely. Uh, there are some questions uh, about uh, your, from uh, related to your talk. So one of them is how is, uh, I mean, how is Newton's law of gravity related to astronomy? 
if you could just briefly uh, tell this. Newton's law of physics, the gravity rather, and Newton's law of gravity, and how does it work for astronomy? Well, Newton's laws of motion and gravitation, they have to be taken together as a package. What you find is that it, they are, they, these laws, gravitation and motion, they work fairly well in understanding the motions of planets or in understanding the structures of the sun and other stars. Now, this thing can be done. At the same time, one must keep in mind the possibility that there may be something strange there which cannot be explained by Newton's laws. So that is how some additional features were discovered. And one of them was the motion of perihelion of Mercury. When you look at Mercury's orbit as a planet around the sun, it follows a very good pattern of Newton's law. But people who had very good observing techniques, they found that each orbit is slightly shifted as it goes on. So this shift in the Perihelion, perihelion meaning the nearest point on the uh, orbit, which is closest to the sun. So what you have to do is to understand why there is this shift. And this could not be explained entirely by Newton's laws of motion and gravitation and Einstein's relativity much later in the game, it came up and it was able to explain it very accurately. So this is the game one plays in, in our uh, astronomy, astrophysics. We try to look for challenging problems and then try to think of answers to them. So the Newton's law of gravitation and motion, they describe the planet, the movement of the planets very well. And you can predict where each planet will be at a particular time. So this is an application of Newton's laws. And the verification is done in astronomy on a very grand scale. And the irregularities later led you to the study of relativity. I think that's why it was called the universal law of gravitation because it yes. just verifies it that yes. gravity works everywhere. Yes. That's, that's a good point to make. Um, I think uh, people are also curious about how astronomers being here on the earth uh, can find out, they can find out distances and properties of stars so far away. How can they measure their motions so accurately with the telescopes? Uh, how, how do the astronomers know? about the distances of astral bodies and their composition or formation. How do they deduce their results? Well, one of the strong sources of uh, information is what you call taking the spectrum of the light. As, as you know, the spectrum has dark lines and bright lines. So, you have to understand why there are these dark lines more often than white lines and why these uh, things that you see in the spectrum, uh, where does it come from? So this tells you uh, some additional clues which will be good for your search for understanding the structure of the object you are observing. So this is, is a, a, a typical thing. Uh, you have angular distances measured. You look at a spectrum. And then similarly, uh, you can also look at other wavelengths. That means not just your 
visible light, but a radio astronomy, then there are uh, infrared, alpha, al ultraviolet, and so on, different wavelengths. And we need different instruments for all these wavelengths. And we find that they contain a lot of information in terms of wavelengths. So as I mentioned earlier, the spectrum not only can confine you to what is of uh, what what you call visible spectrum your eyes can see, but also to a new type of observations, uh, the radio spectrum the ray infrared spectrum and so on. So that is the reason why astronomy has suddenly become a very, very challenging subject. This is another example of studying spectroscopy and radio waves, etc., which is very much a part of physics. And yeah. then you apply it to your astronomical observations and then deduce what those distance objects are made of. Great. So yes, again, another application of physics, or sometimes people might call it chemistry. <laughs> because, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Because, because for spectroscopy, radio waves, you also need to know the chemistry of the elements and physics. And now even biology is creeping in. Yes, definitely. Actually, so we have some questions about that. I, 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 Yes, there is a subject called astrobiology, right. which is gradually showing its effect. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So, so several avenues open for the uh, aspiring students in this, uh, uh, this uh, you know, group here and others also who are watching online. So, uh, sir, the other question is that, uh, can you, uh, uh, you know, why, why are we designing so many telescopes? That's, that's the question. So there are so many telescopes across the world and uh, they're also being advanced uh, too much. Uh, why do we need past? so, so many need... telescopes all over the world? Well, this is a good question <laughs> or what I would call a difficult question. <laughs> First of all, uh, depending on from where you are observing, you have a slightly different view. So those different views uh, supply us with additional information. So all these telescopes that you have spread all over the world, they are each giving you something extra, something new. That is one thing. The second thing is, as we just now discussed, we have other wavelengths other than the wavelengths in which our light are, our eyes are sensitive. So it means you have X-ray astronomy, gamma ray astronomy, all these various astronomies require their peculiar type of telescope. They can't be all looking the same because they are observing different type of wavelengths. So this is the reason why there are so many of them. And also I should mention that there are some wavelengths which you cannot observe from the ground because the, uh, the light that is comes in those wavelengths, it gets absorbed by the atmosphere. So you don't see anything. So in order to observe those like ultraviolet or infrared uh, or X-rays, uh, we cannot sit here on the ground and observe, but we'll have to put, us, put the instruments in satellites and send them up at, at a height above our atmosphere. So the atmosphere can't absorb it. And that is the reason why you see not only different telescopes, but also different satellites, which carry information that astronomers need. 
Great. So you also covered the fact that the, there's something called space-based astronomy and uh, that's another field which is flourishing. India is also getting into putting up lots of satellites with telescopes up in space. And uh, in the coming years, we'll be one of the, uh, we'll have one of the best telescopes to study the sun. In fact, um, I can see a lot of questions on various fields of astronomy and uh, which, which may not be related directly to the uh, talk here. And since we just have five more minutes to go, uh, we'll keep to the uh, you know, relevant questions. Others can be watched, uh, you know, the other answers can be got in, a, in, in the other lectures on our series in the playlist. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> uh, could you suggest some books which uh, students could read or amateur astronomers could read uh, in, in this? You suggest any books for people who want to children who want to study astronomy. Can you suggest books? Well, the book I would suggest, if you follow English, uh, then it is uh, Cosmic Adventure. It is called Cosmic Adventure. And if you are studying in, if, you are, if your language is Marathi, then it is, uh, the book is called Akashashi Zadale Nathil. Both these uh, books in Marathi or English uh, cover uh, the whole range of astronomy. And therefore, if you want to start learning about the subject, these books are not bad to start with. And these are easily available uh, in, in Indian bookshops. So you can. Uh, have a look at them. They are also available online, so it's, it's a good book. In fact, it all I've also read it in my <laughs> younger mm -hmm. times. So, so can we call it a day, Samir? Yes, definitely. So uh, thank you, sir, for being here and uh, you've given us this precious half okay. an hour. Goodbye. And Bye. We'll say goodbye to sir. Hope I'll to hear continue. from you again. Thank yes. you very much. <laughs> I'll just yes. continue with the interaction for a little bit, but let's say goodbye okay. to you. Okay, we, we, we can close. Yeah. So, uh, getting back to some of the questions which are here and, uh, uh, and also a lot of questions about Ayuka Science Day. So, I will uh, field those, <laughs> basically. Uh, so, I, as I was saying that there are some questions about, uh, let's say, about uh, galaxies, about uh, our solar system, about the sun, how does nuclear fusion happen inside it, etc. I will ask you to go on our uh, YouTube channel and look for the playlist called Second Saturday Lectures. There are an excellent set of uh, lectures on each particular topic which are there, and you could uh, have a look at them. Your answers will be in there. It's, see, this is a field of what is called research. So uh, research, <laughs> basically it's called research, but it's actually a search. And if you're good at searching, then you'll get good answers. So go ahead, search in those uh, lectures. If you find your answers there, well and good, you are, a, you are an independent person who can do independent research. Otherwise, you can always ask them back to us on our email ID. Uh, one more thing to add is that um, we have the National Science Day coming up on the 28th of uh, February. And uh, we all celebrate it at Ayuka with an open uh, day at uh, our campus where everybody is in, invited and everybody is free to welcome, uh, visit and uh, we welcome them all. So the thing is that this year we are having it online again on our YouTube channel, which you are watching right now. And it will be the same link where we'll have a lot of uh, events happening since morning till uh, evening. Uh, do keep a lookout for the schedule, which will be announced again on the same link. And uh, you could also look at our uh, Facebook and Twitter handles for the details. Now on that day, particularly since you are here for Professor Nalikar's interaction, we will have another interaction on that day uh, at two o'clock where our professor will be answering uh, some selected questions. Uh, these questions that I'm seeing, a lot of the questions are repeating and people want to know what is a black hole? Why do we, you know, what things get uh, sucked into black holes, etc. Uh, these are things which are more advanced. You know, you, you come to, uh, uh, you know, a stage in study where you want to know really advanced things, but the, the wisest thing to do is to first understand the basics. Like if you don't understand the Newton's law of gravity or even Einstein's law of gravity, which is even further advanced, 
uh, you can suddenly start asking questions about black holes. Uh, I mean, you can ask questions definitely, but you probably will not understand the answers. Uh, that, so, so, so get to that level and then we can discuss them with more understanding. That's all, always my suggestion. So uh, of course, you still have some popular level questions. We may not always have time to study uh, uh, astrophysics in great detail. So uh, for that, we have another interaction on National Science Day at 2 p.m. with the with Professor Narlikar and other astrophysicists who will be answering uh, your questions for a longer time. Okay, so keep a lookout for that and we'll have a way to for you to send your questions to us quite early so that uh, we can be prepared with the answers. <clears throat> so I'm uh, quickly looking at any, any uh, relevant questions. Uh, is there, okay. Um, just don't. Yes, so there's uh, one important question about uh, which, which is not <laughs> astrophysics in depth, uh, which is uh, how does uh, the study of astronomy influence uh, the life of common people? And uh, this, the answer to this is that uh, you, you may not be aware of various things which affect you, and, uh, but, but they do. So just like you know, the discovery of electricity uh, at, at the time when it was discovered, people were saying, how will this affect my life? And can you imagine life without electricity today, without discovery of electron and its charge today? So similarly, uh, astronomy goes much way back uh, in our past and uh, it's the studies of the sky motions, of you know, motions of things in the sky has had effects on our, um, not effects as in, they don't uh, you know, <laughs> exert a force on us, but they've had uh, an effect on our daily lives in a, in a way that we plan things according to them. We plan things according to the phases of the moon. We plan things according to the movement of the sun in the sky every day. So this thing is called time, right? That's what you, uh, you know, you're used to looking at standardized watches these days. But for most of our history, we had depended on the sky and the happenings in the sky to measure time. So that's how, uh, that's, one of the examples of uh, how astronomical studies have affected, uh, uh, influenced rather, the uh, lives of common people. There are of course many other detailed, uh, you know, or, or more important things which we don't consider important in, in generally, uh, but uh, you can hear about them in, I think that's, it's called, uh, there's another lecture by Professor Nalikar in which he describes uh, a few reasons to study astronomy and, <clears throat> where uh, you know you can hear about the dangers posed by uh, passing by objects in the sky and that's one of the things that we don't ever think of that there might be danger coming from space right but yes there is always uh, some some danger and uh, astronomers are playing a big role in trying to actually make us aware that if, if something is coming towards us which could actually you know um, uh, affect uh, lives of many, many humans if something uh, strikes us on the surface. So uh, that's a big uh, responsibility. And of course, uh, you know, there are movies made on this, how people will tackle this. Professor Narlikar even has a, has a book on uh, a, a science fiction book written on this uh, kind of a theme. So uh, go ahead, read all these books. These are good to, uh, you know, uh, think about actually because science fiction is not just fiction and based on some earthly happenings there is a lot of science in it and uh, you might even get cues about something you want to do in the future from a science fiction book so read science fiction read the book which uh, professor narlikar uh, prescribed to you and read your <laughs> study books textbooks as well uh, with this uh, little advice and also uh, with the advice that join us on national science day for a lot of more uh, lectures in which you can find answers to all the questions that I was seeing here. There'll be more speakers, more interactions, uh, which will be live on this channel. So do join us on 28th February. We'll put out the schedule, of course, but even if you, uh, 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 you know, come back to this same link, you'll be able to find out what is happening on that day. So thank you all for being here. And we'll keep uh, having this series of uh, lectures um, online. Uh, sorry, we'll keep visit, revisiting our second Saturday lecture series online with the speakers being present to talk with you. 
uh, soon after that, when uh, regular school uh, times and school uh, classes are, uh, are on, we will invite you back to our Chandrasekhar Auditorium and those schools who are in contact with us can come live for the lecture. But uh, also note that these lectures, while they happen in the Chandrasekhar Auditorium, they're also shown live on our channel here. So keep a subscription, uh, keep the, press the subscription bell here and uh, you'll get to know when the next lecture happens. So with that little advertisement, <laughs> also and also the advices to join us back on 27, 28th February, I will end this session and take your leave. Thank you for being here on this uh, Revisiting Second Saturday Lecture Series and hope to see you again. Goodbye.